Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this. Welcome to a service of morning prayer here at Holy Cross. Uh, we hope that um, you are able to grab your book of alternative service and join us in some capacity um, in your own home. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, and so uh, hopefully you will have um, gotten to know the service quite well, um, and so that you will know the responses as we go along. We begin on page 45 with the penitential rite. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. 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 The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. I invite us to say the Venite together on page 49. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Oh, come, let us worship. The reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. And Saul approved of their killing Stephen. That day a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen, and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging off both men and women. He committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did. 
for unclean spirits, crying with loud shouts, came out of many who were possessed. And many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm is a portion of Psalm 66. You may find this on page 786. Page 786. We say verses 1 through 6. I invite us to say this responsibly by the half verse. <clears throat> Psalm 66, verses 1 through 6. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name, sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you. Sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. And there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no re re rebel rise up against him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John, beginning on the 35th verse of the 6th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me but raise it up upon the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I speak in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, that passage from Acts is, uh, is an interesting little snippet that we have. Um, in some sense, it, it kind of might seem a little bit like a bridge passage, right? You know, we've just heard about the stoning of Stephen, and it says Saul, was, um, Saul had given approval to his execution. Um, in chapter 9 of Acts, you get Saul's conversion, and so this might seem like it's just kind of just moving the story on a little bit. And so there's this um, description of the persecutions that uh, the church faced at that point, that the early Christians faced. This is when they were being kicked out of the temple. They were no longer allowed to be a part of that, of that community. And they were scattered. They were scattered out there. We hear how Saul was ravaging the church, going into people's homes and dragging people off uh, to prison. Many of them probably would have been executed at some point in their lives there. It's not a fun passage. It's not, it's not a, no, it doesn't seem to be an encouraging passage. And yet it ends by saying, there was much joy in that city. What? <laughs> you talk about all this persecution, all this horrible stuff, 
And all of a sudden it says, and there was much joy in the city. So what is exactly going on there? You know, obviously we hear a little bit about Philip and the ministry that he was doing. Unclean spirits were crying out with loud voice. Uh, they were coming out of people's lives. Those who were paralyzed or lame were being healed. And so there was kind of this profound ministry that was happening in the midst of this, this really rough time in their lives. See, sometimes I think we mistakenly believe that joy is, joy is like happiness times a hundred, right? So joy equals happiness, and joy it de depends on everything going um, beautifully and idyllically in your life. If there's no trouble, if there's no hardships, there's no um, kind of uphill battles that you're facing, if everything is just kind of easy street, well then you can be joyful because nothing um, is a problem. And yet that's not what we see in the Bible. And that's not what they mean by joy. Joy, which is a fruit of the Spirit, Paul says later, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Joy is it's kind of hard to define sometimes, but it's this, it's this inner quality of settledness and this inner sense of of delight in what the Lord is doing in your life or in your midst and that is untouched by what happens in this world because it's not dependent upon what happens in this world it's dependent on the presence the power and the activity of the risen Lord. Just like Jesus says, you know, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, will never be thirsty. He's talking about this inner sense of satisfaction, this inner sense of fulfillment, this inner sense of put togetherness, which is dependent on his presence in your lives. Joy is very much that same way. And so even in the midst of Saul ravaging the church, even in the midst of these loud lamentations that they were making because Stephen had just been stoned to death, even in the midst of things that they would not choose, there was this sense that the Lord was active, that the risen Christ was active in their midst, and they could focus on that. And they could delight in that. Scripture also says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And because it roots us, it focuses us on that which truly defines our lives. Which isn't the random happenstances of the world around us. What truly defines who we are, and what truly defines what our life is to be, is following the leading of God. I don't know who's watching this, and I don't know where you are watching this. But wherever you are, maybe ask yourself, where is the Lord drawing you into deeper joy? In wherever you are, with whatever your face, Face with whatever your life might look like right now. Where is the presence of the Lord active? Where is Jesus with you? How do you see Jesus doing something? Where is he drawing you into deeper joy? When we shift our focus uh, away from the ups and downs of life, to that which is constant, nourishment to our souls that we receive from the risen Lord, then we will find, like the Christians here, that we can express joy in the midst of anything, and that the joy that comes from the Lord will be our strength in all times. Amen. We continue on page 53. We say together the hero Israel. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. For our intercessions today, we will use litany number seven, which is found on page 116. Let us pray in faith to God our Father, to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the church of the living God throughout the world, for those churches who may feel scattered and disconnected, let us ask for the riches of God's grace. Lord, hear yeah, and have mercy. mercy. For those who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear yeah, and have, have mercy. mercy. For those who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, for anyone who is struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts and the encouragements of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. In our cycle of prayer today, we pray for our primate, the Most Reverend Linda Nichols. We pray for our Archbishop and Metropolitan, the Most Reverend Greg Kerr Wilson, for the people of St. Michael's and All Angels in Strathmore, Reverend Malcolm Kern and the Reverend Betty Bradley. We pray for our Companion Diocese of the Windward Islands, for the Right Reverend Leopold Friday, their Bishop, for the people of St. Andrew with Holy Innocence, St. Giles and St. Michael, and the Venerable Michael Marshall. We also pray for St. John with St. Mark and St. Matthew and the Reverend Coleridge Brooker and Christ the King with St. Francis on Grenada. In our parish, we give thanks for our crucifers and our servers. And we give thanks for our members, Vera and Alan Jenkins, Julie, Mike, Miriam, Hugh, Audrey, Diane, and Doris. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the Prime Minister of this country, for all who govern the nations. We pray that they may strive for justice and peace, and that they may be filled with your wisdom. They may provide lead in, a leadership which is based on following your guidance. Let us ask the strength of God. Oh, Lord, hear yeah. and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, for doctors and nurses, particularly in this time of COVID-19, we pray that their work and their studies may benefit humanity. We pray for those who are in need in our parish, for Mary and Greg and Charlene, Faye, Claire, Marjorie, Brenda, and Dan. I invite you either silently or loud to lift to God those whom you hold in your hearts this morning. We pray for their help, for their strength, and for their healing. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, and, and have mercy. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, for their family and friends who may be in a time of grief and mourning at this point, let us ask for the peace of Christ. Lord, Lord hear yeah, and, and have mercy. mercy.
O God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now, as our Lord himself has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. Amen. And let us this day seek Christ's joy. Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.